Alhamdulillah, applying the value is by role modeling. Uh, are you a role model to your colleague, the brother who asked the question? Am I a role model to my family and my behavior, my attitude? Am I a role model to my community? Applying the values is not just some thing which be written and giving to the people and ask them to rehearse it. Many, many hafiz we have. I've got millions and millions and millions of hafiz of Quran, hafiz of Hadith, hafiz of Sirah, hafiz of history. But hafiz is good, but not good enough. We have to change the hafiz into alim and the alim into the man who will be able to live the knowledge that he or she is having in his heart and at the back of his mind. Then to practice it. And this is what happened to Hazrat Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal at the time of this big uh, confrontation with al Ma'moon about whether the Quran is being created or not. He said, no, Quran is the word of God and this is a story, the end of the story. He was tortured for years in the prison, but he did not change his mind because he was Hafiz, then Alim, then practicing the Ilm, then living the Ilm in his actual life. Role modeling is something which is not easy found, easily done. So start with myself as I talk about uh, the heart uh, earlier on and the soul and the mind and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala measure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and has, as the Prophet said, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala measuring the taqwa, not by the size of the man or the woman or the height or the color or the status, but by actually the heart and the sincerity in that. This is number one. In the individual, so the personal responsibility of applying this. I remember one of our brothers who used to work for Islamic Relief in uh, South Sudan. He's now the chairman of the board of Islamic Relief in Ireland. And he was so kind, he's originally Iraqi, but his character is totally different to somebody like myself. He's over the moon, over the top. And I'm at the bottom of whatever he is climbing up to reach. And when I visited South Sudan, a place called Wau in uh, Warab, in a, in a state called uh, uh, Wau, I think in 2006 or 2007, I can't remember exactly. You know what? When I was going to the uh, uh, one of the water uh, point, which had been built by Islamic Cliff, the children were looking at me and were laughing and were happy, smiling and pointing to me. And their, their mothers and others, I said, what's wrong? It's my first time to come to this place. And they were talking to one another with their local language that I am the other man. They thought that I'm him. And this is the impression of brother, uh, oh, Allah knows his name. Allah knows his name. Uh, what is it? You know why? Because one day, you know what he did? They were standing in a queue to get water. And he wanted to drink water. You know what one of them brought to him to drink? A big jar of water. No, I said, no, 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 I don't want this, all this big water tank for me. I just want a cup or a glass of water. Thank you, keep this for yourself. With this kind of living with people, actually they will value you and they will remember you, even if you're not there. And anyone looks like you will make them happy. And they think, oh, oh, he is coming back to us. Alhamdulillah. I'm trying to remember his name because I want you to, to make a dua for him. Uh, uh, oh, it's not coming to me. Will, will anyways make dua? Inshallah. Other thing is in Jabal Khawatir, suppose I'm a very poor man. On the day of Eid, I bought for my children what I have. When I go and visit him, you go and visit him. How lovely, when you say, how lovely is this cloth. How beautiful you are to the children. So the children will find that the value of the clothes that the father and mother bought for them is of a greatest value because the, the witness is coming from you. Or when they feed you, Sometimes 
you show on your face the beautiful taste of the food. One time, Prophet Sallallahu was sitting in the middle of his companions, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and one of his companions having some grapes. You know grapes? And he was insisting that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam eat it. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was eating it and putting it on his face. And he was not sharing any of his companions till he finished the whole thing. And the man was so thrilled, so excited over the moon. And by the time the man left, they told him, why don't you share with us some of these taste, tasty grapes of Muhammad He said, what? Because it was not tasty. Yeah, and exactly. if, but if you taste it, it will come on the impression on your face and this will upset the man. He wanted to make the man happy. And he did. By taking the burden of eating tasteless, maybe rotten grapes and not sharing it with his companion because this man could have hurt the feeling of the man. Coming back to the second question, role modeling. How can we make role model? You start by having a program, which was a dream for me, which is building the future leaders inside. And this is something which we need because, because the humanitarian sector, whether it's Muslim or non-Muslim, need young, qualified, experienced leaders, ex-school leavers, young graduates, and others. When we have a program of education could be a master degree, academia on one side, and have a program of mentoring and mentorship by people who have seen it all and can sit down with them. You cannot go in bringing or making the new leadership from the younger generation by only going to the academia. Academia is good, but not good enough. Academia and mentorship Huh? is what we want. And this will take years to see a mentor inside the organization, to see a role model amongst you in each, in each department. Sometimes our five values are there, but we're not dealing with them. And the newcomer to Islamic Leaf might say, oh my God, they're not observing any of the values. And it starts with me as an individual not starting with me as a speaker. Individual to believe in the five values and more, not an individual who can actually regurge, recite, and uh, talk about the five values of Islamic relief. If we do that, you will be like, brother, oh, yeah, I doesn't come, his name doesn't come back. Uh, anyway, Make a dua for Allah to uh, let me to remember his name. Yes, second question. Right. So, so in today's uh, you know day and age, there are so many challenges and many people in crisis. Doctor, you know, Alhamdulillah, uh, IRW family is pretty much trying to be part of it everywhere and anywhere. How do we prioritize? You know. Starting from Middle East in Africa, now in Horn of Africa, you know, so in South Asia, Southeast Asia. So the list goes on, and I'm sure you are more, uh, um, you know, aware of the situation. We recently traveled to Sudan as well. So, how should we prioritize as an organization uh, in terms of our donor fatigue, the challenge? I'm, a, I'm talking more of racial side of it now. So, how do you think, I and mean, in your experience, uh, how as an organization? We actually focus and we prioritize. Alhamdulillah, uh, challenges are not to stop. And you are being created as an organization by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to meet the challenges. 
If you remember the story of how Islamic Reef started with the 20 pence and no office, no disc, nothing, no strategy, no big figures, nothing, you will realize that in the middle of the storm, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to put the seed of Islamic leaf, which became after 36 years, next month 37 years, to be whatever it is. Next year, 17th of January, you have to celebrate the 37th anniversary of Islamic leaf. In confidence. Okay. Challenging is, or challenges, is a, non, is, is a no-ending story. No-ending story. Prophets being tortured, killed, uh, harassed, uh, called names up till now. And they are the prophets that Allah SWT has chosen them to be the best of mankind. But they have the worst time to live on this planet of earth, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for challenges, no. You have to prepare yourself. What's up, Minkum Ummatun? No, not this one. At the time of the challenge, okay, fine. And this is nafir, okay, in Quran. We should have inside our organization different compartment or department or specialism to respond. Not actually, we swing one direction, all of us, then we we'll go out. If we do that, we'll have no vision and no sense of uh, understanding what the surrounding is. Some of us, the word is to understand the religion, not only understand the subjects, not only the religion, subjects, which could be like Islamophobia, advocacy people and the research will deal with it all the time, and the media people, which should be in, in actually emergency response, the emergency department will deal with it and prioritize, uh, prioritize uh, which one first according to what we have, then development, okay, then rehabilitation. So in each of this department, when actually synchronize the work between all of them, would be able to control the speed of the gearbox of the car. Can we just let somebody to go in 100 miles an hour and somebody going 20 miles an hour? We have to adjust uh, the operation on the speed of the car, which is the organization, from inside the gearbox, which those people who have the speciality. Coming back to Islamophobia and what Muslims are facing, I take you back 20 years ago. In 2001, September, sometime in September, end of September or October. Three of us were actually coming from the toilet. Myself, Adrian Sutton, the head of uh, media department, who was a very good brother, committed Christian, very, very dynamic individual. I, I miss him. I hope that he can work for you. He took all the risk to go to Afghanistan and other places in 2002 and others. And Dr. Ahmad Wael, and who's not working for Islamic League anymore, he was the head of IT and the head of communication uh, department. And we were talking while actually we were washing our hands. I was doing wudu, Ahmad was doing wudu, and uh, uh, Adrian was washing his hands. Oh, you know what Adrian said? Hani, Dr. Hani, said what? He said, we need to bend our back, let the wave, or let the storm pass and don't want to yeah, stand up strongly against this storm. SubhanAllah, the response was decisively no. We are a part of the Muslim community in the West and the whole globe. What happened to them will happen to us. We have to stand up to defend them. You know what happened after that, brothers and sisters, which have not seen September 11th in UK and in America? First of all, we started with knowing the art of dealing with the media by going to be trained in one of those companies to, who taught us how to respond to an interviewer's silly questions, stupid questions. 
Huh? It took us, well, I think it was about three or four thousand pounds for the three of us to have the training in one day. At that time, it was quite a big amount of money for one day. And from that, we we're coming back. No, no, we are, no, we are, no, we are. Out of camp, we became progressive, progressive, progressive with a message. And we made at that time, 20 years ago, one spokesman. If the media contacts you in Los Angeles, you give them the telephone number of the spokesman in the organization in Birmingham. Or if the media contact you in South Africa or in Sweden or in Australia, it's the same spokesman. And you made a deputy for the spokesman as well. So it was myself and Harun Ata'Allah, I think some of you knows him. He left Islamic if now and he's working in a high uh, position in one of the organizations in Rome. So this is what we have done at that time to respond. We trained, we knew our message, and we were not afraid of standing against the storm because we were not guilty. Other organizations trying to lower their back and more than 20 organizations have been closed down by even by the American America and even uh, uh, George Bush Jr. Was, was reading the names of such organizations. So you have, you have, you have to make this synchronization between your departments, agreeing and putting the right people and making the priority according to the, to, to the knowledge and the experience of the individuals inside the organization. And Islamophobia is not going to stop tomorrow because it's controlled and managed and supported and financed by governments, not only by individuals or organization or a media. Because what happened to Islamic League over the last few months is something orchestrated by certain governments in different parts of the world. While they are still inside the storm of those Islamophobic individuals that are from the Far East or Far West or the center on the Middle East or any part of the world. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hadi. Um, just, I've got one question. It's a, it's a, it's a I don't know, it's, it's not directly related to the values, brother, but then you can always relate um, uh, your life to the values uh, that you have there. And what I really no problem. want to ask, yeah, I want, really wanted to ask you because the, the, the other reason why we really want to hold these workshops is also looking after the uh, overall well-being of the employees, uh, be it mental well-being, be, be it physical well-being. Um, often we face some struggles in our life, uh, Dr. Hani, when, um, you know, it can be, it can come from, uh, it can be generated from different uh, aspects of your life, it can be work-related, maybe you are asking something that the organization cannot uh, give you, you're not happy, maybe you're going through some financial crisis, maybe you're having some family troubles, so you find yourself going down and feeling very low. Um, so I'm just curious to know, have you ever uh, experienced um, uh, in, in yourself in such kind of a situation? And, uh, and in, in such a circumstance, how do you lift yourself up? How do we lift ourselves up? I think this thing happened to the Prophet Sallallahu the ups and downs, the ups and downs, the ups and downs. It's the sunnah of life. It's not to Dr. Hani or to Dr. Uh, uh, Muad or to Dr. Ali or to Dr. Uh, uh, Farzana or Rizwana or others. No, it happened to all of us. It's, it's normal. It's the sunnah of life. One day you wake up and you find my, one of my children or one of their children is cannot speak. All of a sudden, out of the blue, we keep cursing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why, 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 why? Or will let us react and act quickly to save the girl or to save the boy. And we, one, we, one day we wake up and we find there's a storm destroying half of our house. Like one of my friends in, in, uh, in here, he was away be giving condolence to another family in the north of uh, England. 
and his grandson, by mistake, uh, lit the house on fire because he was playing with a tor not a torch, with a candle, and it fell down, and uh, it, it burned the whole house. And in the house was his wife, his son, and his grandson. All of a sudden, he lost maybe the house. But Alhamdulillah, Allah gave him a good uh, reward of saving his wife, saving his son, and saving his grandson. So with patience and compassion, he has to rebuild the house again. Something like this never expected. But for a man like that, he can say, Alhamdulillah, 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 and working for what needs to be happening. In my special case, it's my if, if you consider me that I have done something good, it's not because of me only. No. Never. First of all, it's because of my wife and my family. Because they were the people behind me. And if I could have been married to somebody else, I, Allah could not have let me to achieve what you are, what we achieved nowadays. So he chosen this wife for me, and she is the unsung hero. This is one thing. This actually where uh, you want to get married, you want to get the dude man, the dude man will be full of dude. Dude in Arabic means worms. And or the girl who is actually, oh, with spiky hair, watch your teacher. Okay, fine. So, what is this? Oh, no, she did not move my chemistry. There's no reaction when I saw her. And the girl would say, there is no reaction in my chemistry when I met with this man. You know what? Let those young people thank them very well. It's not only about chemistry. It's about the substance. You can use uranium to kill people, and you can use uranium to save lives as well. So there's a chemistry for uranium. We can make the uh, atomic bomb, and you can make this energy, which is friendly energy. Both of them are chemistry, but the same subject. So choosing your partner, or your wife or your husband is extremely important. As the Prophet Sassam said, uh, if you want to choose a, a wife, choose the one who, if you look at her, she will make you yeah, very happy to see her face. And if she, le if you leave the house, she will protect the kingdom of you. Your children, your money, your wealth, and whatever it is. And Prophet Sassam said in another hadith, uh, marry the, 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 the woman will be married for four things beauty, richness, family, and uh, uh, what being religious. Being religious. religious. Being religious. Uh, religious, sorry, sorry, religious, religious. Jazakallah khair Being religious. And Prophet Hassan gives the preference to the, the religious one. Once upon a time, Hazrat Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal was proposing two girls, two sisters. One of them was more beautiful than the others, and one of them, I think, was yani, but the one who was less beautiful than the other was making Qiyam al layl every, every day, and the other one was just making the five prayers every day. And they chosen the one who was making Qiyam al layl every day. That's why he became Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. The same for the husband. Allah subhanahu wa gave the woman one choice. Of course, the status should be closer. She has to be happy when she looks at him, whatever it is, his education, whatever it is. But Dean is the cornerstone, not the beauty, not the wealth, nothing. Dean is number one. If the Dean is there in action, so you can look for the others. And don't be deceived by people going to the mosque and praying and lengthening their beard. Uh, you have to, uh, this is what Hazrat Omar Sallallahu said, when somebody came to the mosque and somebody else said, this man is extremely pious, man. <laughs> he said, come here. How do you know? He said, come, he come to the prayer in the mosque for five times every day. Said, have you dealt with him in business? He said, no. Did you live with him? He said, no. Did you travel with him? He said, no. He said, if he did not do this, never talk about him. 
And this was my advice to the system. This is uh, number one. Number two, when I used to uh, be low, you know where I used to go? Allah, it looks like a song. When I used to be low, or when I used to be, when I, when I used to feel low, you know when I used to go? Can anybody make a music? It rhymes. <laughs> I used to take the, to, to go to visit one of the field offices to lift up my my soul, my morality. So insist a part of your package as an employee or as a trainee is actually or as a volunteer is to go to the field, to visit the field. If a volunteers are amongst us and it might be very expensive for Islamic League to send them to one of the field offices, maybe the volunteer themselves start to raise a fund for the ticket to help the Islamic leaf, sending them to this area to come back, reforming different men and women. Because it's not by listening to somebody like me, it's by seeing the impact of the work, of the money that actually you are raising to help those people in Sudan or South Sudan or in the RC or in Afghanistan or in Pakistan or any part or in Myanmar, no, what do you call it, Myanmar? Rohingya, or you go and others. Okay, by seeing, you will be very more impressed, and this will 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 lift up. You might say, okay, fine, we cannot travel as you used to do because you are the chairman, or you are the CEO, or you are the president. You have the authority. I say, why well, go to the hospitals if it allows you at that nowadays? Go to the neighborhood and see. Make a make make a make a domestic program. To help the people, go to the elderly and help them. Go to the sick at home. Go to the homeless on the street. And when you mix with those people, whether they are Muslims or Muslim, they will lift your morale up. And you say, Alhamdulillah, Allah from not testing me with what they have. And you have to fight hard to advocate for their cause. How many here in the middle of UK, which one of the top? leading uh, country on the whole earth, a lot of homeless in the street. A lot of homeless in the street. Join one of those uh, 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 organizations who deal with homeless, with elderly, with sick, disabled, uh, financially support the dog for the blind. And all this kind of forestation, for, for you had a very, uh, very severe fire in, 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 the, in, in the forest in, in, in last year and it killed more, more than 500,000 uh, beings with the birds or animals and others and happy in the habitat and how can I replant a tree? Okay, make a project that actually your volunteers plant to, to ask the government or the forestry department in the government to plant one million tree over the coming five years and get all the people around you to go every year for a week or two or three weeks or one weekend for the for for, for for in in the year for each group to plant from the community maybe hundred trees five thousand trees ten thousand trees and by the end of the five years you replanted one million tree and let every young man and woman to remember that this is his tree this is where you actually. Uh, when you feel low, you don't know where you go. I think somebody has to carry on. You know who can, can finish it for you? Send this, these things to somebody called Muhammad Naim in uh, America and uh, tell him because he was a composer, a musician and singer as well. And they have got something called Native Deen. And when we were in Somalia, uh, not in Somalia, in Mali, and we were on a plane, or chartered a small plane to go around Mali at the time. And him and another called uh, young girl from, from Los Angeles called Nadja Afghani told them, you are not going to land before writing a song. Wow. And, they, and they wrote it and they sang it in the airport. Wow. If you could talk to Brother Abdullah or Sister Farzana, Brother uh, Muhammad Naim in USA and tell him, about this, I tell him, Dr. Albana is reminding you with Mali song. First, he has to send you the song. Second, <laughs> you have to write another one. 
Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm serious. And this is the challenge. You know, you know the challenge is only, you know, do you think the challenge is only a raising fund? No. A song like this, if Muhammad Naim writes it, as he wrote it with Naji Afghani in the past, could move the hearts of the millions, especially with what we have of the power of social media and communication at the moment. Inshallah, we'll Go to Muhammad Naim. Inshallah. Okay, and let, okay. let, let, let me know how, what, what he does with it. Or I'll or I, uh, get you with Abdullah Rahal, or I'll get you Sister Farzana, I'm not going to leave you alone. Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah. 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 Any more questions? Be mindful of time. Uh, we have actually taken more time from Dr. Hani than we have requested for. But as I said, we just don't want to stop. It doesn't feel like uh, we just want to keep on listening. But uh, Alhamdulillah, if uh, no one has any more questions, then um, I really, uh, really want to thank uh, Sister Mahim and Brother Abdullah. I know Sister Mahim, we don't want to be on the spot. Uh -huh. Sister, 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 before yes. you finish, I remember yes. the name of the brother, Brother Muzaffar. Muzaffar Tawash from Iraq, he lived in Ireland, and you can contact the Irish office and get the story, the authentic story from Muzaffar, Brother Muzaffar Tawash, who is the chair of Islamic Leaf Ireland, and you can contact Salah Abul Qasim actually in the headquarters and they can con let you to contact Muzaffar Tawash to tell you about the story. Please communicate. Yeah. So we're connect. Not voting down the name. We're voting down the name, brother. Thank you so much. Brother Muzaffar. From uh, for I, uh, I, is it Ireland? Brother, uh, Ireland. 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 Yeah. All right. Uh, Dr. Hani, uh, Mr. Mahin, Mr. Mahin has got one question for you. Um, uh, hi. How do you, no, not, not about your head. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Ask, how do you stay so humble? You know, um, I think our current leaders overall in our community uh, uh, don't have that trait. So how do you, after achieving so much, so nobody can claim, nobody can claim that he or she are humble. Humility is a gift, is a, is a God-given gift to individuals when they do their duty. Prophet Sallallahu was the most uh, humble man on earth. And he said, those who lower themselves down for Allah, Allah will elevate them in this life and in the life to come. The more you bend your back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the more you bend <coughs> your back to the community, and you live their issue, the more that Allah SWT will be elevating you and give you the status of humility and the status of connecting Shem. With whom? With the angels. Not only the angels are surrounding us, by the way. Sister, I can't, I, don't, I didn't catch your name. Sister Mahin. There are many, huh? Sister Mahin. Mahin. There are many creation of Allah outside the circle of the angels are listening to us now. Between me and you, I don't know how many thousand miles, it's full of angels as well as full of other creations of Allah that he knows who they are, what they do, how they comprehend and listen and understand and record because the, the, the wealth of the knowledge of Allah is unimaginable. If the, if, if the ocean or if the, if the ocean was actually the ink to write the words of Allah, the knowledge of Allah, it will be dry before we finish writing the knowledge of Allah or the, or the kalimat of Allah, the words of Allah. And even if we bring another ocean, another ocean, another... So in this, sister and brothers, remember that there's other creation and the angels are listening to you now with you in your bedroom or with you in your front room and love to make istighfar for each and every one of you 
and those people will let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the status of humility. Humility is not a book that we read. Humility is a soul that traveled inside the heart of the individual and go through every cell and every component of the cell shaking it with these electric electromagnetic waves to wake you up because the one who does this for you is the one who knows that inside your heart is taqwa and nobody knows the taqwa in your heart apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and humility is a status of God given blessing to you in your life. Let him to give it to each and every one of us. And none of us can claim that he is humble and he is down to earth and he is so pious. All these are waste of time because this could be a sign of hypocrisy, a sign of devil surrounding us because the devil is the one who challenged Allah how dare that you made me to make sujood to this man I've created from flame he's created from clay and he refused and he challenged Allah the one who challenged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala became kafir don't you think that he will challenge me and you that's why in the Quran said he will come to us from between our hands, you see, like say, Oman Khalfihim, and from behind, and on Aymanihim on the right hand side, and on Shamailim, which be surrounding us, shrining us, like the cocoon. Then when we are trapped inside this cocoon, you know, you know what you do? You know, when you give the small piece of date to the born, the newly born child, baby. And you make tahniq there. Actually, then he will spit us in the hellfire and run away because he's afraid of the punishment of God. So humility is a sign of taqwa or the sign of taqwa. And taqwa is a sign of acceptance of Allah to the heart of the individual like you, sister. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you to be the most humble who can show humanity to mankind without being affected by how much people will be praising you and talking nice about you. Amen. And all of you. Um, all of you. Brother Muhammad, um, you have a question? No, I don't have a question. I have a request from Dr. Hani, if he allows me. I'm not sure if what I will request is already available or not. What about uh, writing um, the story of Islamic relief in a book, Dr. Hani? With all these inspiring stories, I, I think uh, it's, it's something valuable. <laughs> what is this? Is this a punch or? <laughs> uh, I would just think if, if you can write some, uh, some about your biography mixed with the story. It, 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 it need not to be personal. It, it will be for the advantage of everyone working in the humanitarian section. I remember that I saw um, a program on Al Jazeera. I think it was featuring you. I'm not sure uh, it was on Al Jazeera or something else. And uh, also other programs featuring some of other brothers. But mashallah, they are calling you the father of humanity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. So if, if you can write um, something with the help of others even, it, it can be a teamwork. Uh, because I think these stories that you gave us, some of them now or some snaps from them, are very inspiring for everyone working in the humanitarian section and they they really help in in, in elevating the, the the spirit of everyone working on ground and helping us to push ourselves and to move forward and as you said sometimes it is lifting our souls when we are down with our personal circumstances so to read these stories or to 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 have a book uh, featuring uh, the most inspiring stories along your journey with the humanitarian work, especially with Islamic Relief, will be something uh, good if you can do this. Jazakallah khair. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah khair, brother. I've been doing something like this on my personal capacity. As you said, uh, it has to be done as a teamwork. My dream is not only to talk about what I have uh, seen, but what I have seen is my 
image and my experience, but what Islamic leaf has seen. What you need to write to IRW very, very uh, progressively that we need to write the history of IRW. And this history, brother, what's your name, brother? Muhammad, Muhammad Al Jibali. Muhammad Al Jibali, Bismillah, mashallah, Bismillah, mashallah. And Sister Farsana, Bismillah, mashallah. And Sister, all the sisters who asked the question, brothers, and the brother who from the Khair Foundation, Bismillah, mashallah, and uh, all of you, mashallah. Oh. And the volunteers in Victoria, and, the, and everybody. I don't know how many, how many people in the room. But we, it has to be uh, uh, an organizational project supported by all the partners because you leave this legacy to not only to the Muslim but to humanity. How a 20 pence startup organization become whatever we have nowadays and how some people in the midst of Islamophobia trying to make it kneel down and try to tarnish it and try to finish it. Because history, uh, Brother Muhammad Jibali, should not be written only by one man. It will be his own view. Now, if we have, let me give you an example before we close. If you want to write the history of Australia, how many states in Australia, or, or what you call it, municipality or districts in Australia? Five, six, ten, twenty? Huh? How many? So we, we have six and we have two territories or three. So you think about nearly uh, eight. Okay. How many cities inside the eight? Then how many townships inside the eight? Then how many uh, areas uh, yeah, uh, suburbs. inside the eight? Huh? Suburbs inside the eight. And see, if we mm. say in Australia, we need to write the history of Australia between the year in every suburb to write the history according to the certain criteria. But if you ask me as a very uh, knowledgeable, uh, learned, or yourself as a magnificent learned uh, scholar of history, write it. Yes, you will write it. But this will become your own view, the views of others. That's why if we want to write the history of Islamic belief, we have to ask the people who made the history in Sudan. In... And when he woke up, the emergency doctor told him, doctor, if you are five minutes late, you could have been completely paralyzed. But the intention of this doctor to go to visit the sick man in the hospital, saved his life, saved his body from becoming paralyzed because he wanted to go just to bring happiness and joy and draw a smile on the face of this friend of him in the hospital there, the patient. And if we remember that visiting the sick is something that Allah and the Prophet asked us to do it, because from the time you leave your house till the time you go to the sick people and the time come back, there's about 70,000 angels are saying, Allah maghfir lahu, Allah maghfir lahu, Allah maghfir lahu, Allah maghfir lahu. Keep making istighfar from the time you left till the time you come back. If this took, it will take you about two, three hours. You can imagine. If you measure now, Allah maghfir lahu, how many, how many seconds take? Five seconds? Ten seconds? And say, multiply by 70,000 and multiply by three or four hours, which is the whole journey of you going to visit the sick. Which is very important value for us in the West or in the Far East to, to, to spread our compassion. Now talk about compassion, which is Rahma, to everybody. Compassion is not only for myself. Oh, I have to look at myself. No, no, no. Compassion is for me, for my family, for my neighborhood, for the community, for society, for humanity. And this is the compassion. You can imagine in one visit, if you somebody can multiply it mathematically, three hours, multiply it by 
I think uh, in three hours, I think each each istighfar will take about five seconds, and see how many istighfar you make in three hours or four hours the time, the time of your journey. And this is this is for somebody that you know. So imagine that when you go to the hospital, you want to draw a smile to those elderly people in the hospitals who are maybe uh, uh, Afro-Australian or from the native population or from the Asian background or from any, without knowing them, without knowing them, and you go there and shake their hand or shake their hands. This is before Corona, of course. Now you can just sit there and actually, if they allow you to do that at the moment. But in the good old days, they used to allow us to go there and to draw a smile to them because those elderly people could die of homesickness, being lonely, because there's no family member of them to go and visit them. Your neighbor next door to you. And the Christmas is coming. Of course, we know that Christmas is a celebration by our Christian brothers and sisters. But they are happy. The least you can do is to look after them and to knock the door. Do you need any help? Do you need any support? And to maybe, if we have the time, to invite them for a meal or to give them a box of chocolate and whatever it is. This is the compassion, which is Islamic belief is talking about. Compassion should be action-oriented. Action-oriented. It's not a, a, a bayan by our sheikh or our uh, ustaz or our imam in a mosque or our scholar. No, 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 no. It's compassion, it's action. And every value that we have, have has to be translated by action that we do to save and serve others. This is extremely important. Custodianship is another value of Islamic life, five values. You are responsible. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I have offered the custodianship to be carried by mountains, by skies, by everything. But they refused because they knew the enormity of the weight of the responsibility of the custodianship, the word the custodianship. Custodianship is not one way system. It's dual carriage way, in and out. You become the most glamorous man as a president, but you become the most responsible man for even the ants, the insects, the animals, the birds, the trees, the water, the climate, and the human being. This is custodianship. That's why mountains and skies and earth refused to take it as a responsibility because, oh my God, and the man said, yes, I am for it. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, this man, okay, took the responsibility of the custodianship because he may is, is jahil, ignorant. That's why he is making zulm to himself or to herself. Because custodianship is not one-way system. It's not one way or my way is the highway. That's the second one. The third principle or the third value of Islamic is excellence. Whenever you do something, excel. Excel, excel in study, in performance, in teaching, in helping. Even the Prophet Sallallahu said, if you want to slaughter an animal, okay, أحسنوا الذبحة يعني be good to the animal when you slaughter it أحسنوا من الإحسان how by not showing him that's number one that you are slaughtering another animal in front of him this number one by feeding the animal before the slaughter by giving him water to drink and 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 by actually sharpening the knife to decrease the time or the length of the time of the slaughter itself. Even see the Prophet ﷺ was talking, even if we do this by our own hand, we should be very merciful to the animal. And I know that in Australia, 
there's a many repertoire actually slaughter maybe 1000 10000 100000 million animal on the day so excellence goes where everywhere 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 in our uh, in our actually life uh, all the way and the excellence should not only be to muslims no 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 no, no. excellent to beings beings including human beings your cat the dog you have in, the, in, in your garden, actually other animals, the horse, the donkey, uh, the birds, the climate, all this, you have to look after it on the principles of excellence. Sincerity, the only one, this is number four, the only one who will know that me and you are sincere is me and Allah. See this too? Me and Allah. Sincerity is not a show. Oh, I am a cry in front of people like a lot of, or most of the uh, people who make the talk show actually uh, there. Uh, the, the, those people, oh, I cry. No, no, no. Sincerity is in privacy and in, sec in secrecy. When you wake up, in the middle of the dark of the night, in the middle of the darkness of the middle of the dark night, and between you and me, there's nobody else can see you. Not your wife, not your children, not your neighbors, nobody can hear you. And you build this beautiful relationship with you and him. This is the word of sincerity. Sincerity is make you to be scared that the people will see what you do in public. Actually, because you might be afraid that you might be called a hypocrite. This kind of struggle in the heart of the man and the woman to bring sincerity as a cornerstone in our heart here, actually, to try to purify our soul and our spirit. The last but not least was the social justice. Social justice is a struggle of every prophet of every messenger of Allah, subhanahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ajma'in, of every reformer, like all of you, a human being has not been created as the, to be given the custodianship to sit down and do nothing. A human being has to become a reformer. مَنْ رَعَى مِنْكُمْ مُرْكَرَمْ فَلَيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِي فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ بِلِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَهَذَا أَلَعْفُ مَنْ The one among us, if he or she sees uh, something bad, you have to change it either by hand, if they can, or by tongue, if they can, or by heart, if they can. It depends on the ability and the, the, the strength of the individual. And this is take us to the time when the Muslims were tortured in Mecca by the Qurayshite. And one of them was Ammar ibn Yasser. And he saw his mother was being killed and tortured, his father was being killed and tortured. And they came and asked him to say something bad about the Prophet. And they felt that he was tortured and so And under this pressure, he was a crying and he said something bad about the Prophet ﷺ, about Islam. And he was regretting it, regretting it, regretting it, till the Prophet ﷺ was passing by to uh, see his followers at the time what had been happening to them. And he asked them, why are you crying? And he told them the story. I said, Ammar, said, yes, my Prophet Sallallahu said, how about your heart? He said, my heart is clean. You are there, Allah is there, Islam is there. You know what the, merc the most merciful Prophet, the most merciful individual on earth, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, told him, don't worry, Ammar, if they come back to torture you again, say it again to save your life, because your heart is clean. But taqwa ahuna, at taqwa ahuna, Piety is here. Can you see my heart? Go this way, this way, this way, this way. Last but not least, the capacity of our heart can accommodate the whole world, the whole humanity. Imagine that this small piece of flesh in our body is the cornerstone of saving our life in this life and in the life to come. 
على ان في الجسد مضغه ان ا سايد اور بودي از ا سمول بيس اوف فليش اذا صلحت صلح الجسد كله واذا فسدت فسد الجسد كله ان اور بودي ذير از ا بيس اوف فليش تو ذا هارت لايك ذيس اف ات بيكمز جود ذا هول بودي ويل بيكم جود اف ات بيكمز باد ذا هول بودي ويل بيكم بيكم باد And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talked about sincerity, he said, "Inna Allah la yanzuru does not look. Allah does not look at your face, beautiful or not beautiful, tall or short, strong or not strong, black or white or brown or yellow or whatever it is, or the size of your body. But Allah look at a eh, your a eh, your heart. Then your action. Ila qulubikum wa amalikum." Then your action, and he pointed like this: at taqwa ahuna, at taqwa ahuna, wa yashiru ila qalbi. Piety is here, piety is here, and he was uh, pointing his finger to his heart. This is, in principles, the uh, the little explanation of the five pillars or the five uh, uh, values of Islamic belief, and we can add more and more, as I mentioned at the very beginning. Jabr al-Khawatir is extremely important for all of us to follow and to do 24-7. Since you are all our humanitarian worker, alhamdulillah, voluntary work nowadays, brothers and sisters, is not just a, a voluntary work. It's a compulsory work. You know why? Because what is happening to the humanity nowadays, particularly to the Muslim world as a, as a whole, is something which is unimaginable is shaded by islamophobia extremism radicalism and terrorism which is tarnishing muslims by that you don't become reactionary but you come proactively proactively res not responding planning planning to compete all these uh, isms against my values, against my religion, against my identity. Because nobody can live in peace if he or she lost her identity or has no identity, unfortunately. And our identity is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No doubt, and you should be very proud of this, and you not blink your, uh, your, your, your eyes when you say it, and stand still high, actually, on a very solid ground saying it because the one who will be surrounding you to protect you, to save you, to guide you is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in the middle of this, you have to increase the amount of time balancing between your family and your community because the size of the enormity affecting humanity is incredible. If I take you with me to the DRC, DRC is the Democratic Republic of Congo. The highest rape on earth is still happening there. The wealthiest country, the world, one of the most wealthiest and resourceful country on earth, but the most, the poorest nation on earth. Because people agreed to steal the resources and they are supporting more than 70,000 fighting armed groups inside DRC over the last 60 years. Lead them to fight one another and let us to take the gold and uranium and others and cobalt and others and ship it somewhere else. Advocacy is something which is extremely valuable and important. Where the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it three times in the Quran, one of them, أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدعو اليتيم ولا يحض على طعام مسكين. Have you seen the one who denied the day of judgment? Okay, who is he? ذلك الذي is it is he who is it is she who ذلك الذي يدعو اليتيم treat the orphans very badly and you are the people who are trying to protect. And help and save the lives of the orphans. Number one. And who and he is the one who does not advocate 
ادفوكيت ولا يحد على طعام المسكين ادفوكيت فور فيدينج ذا نيدي ذا نيدي اور ريسبوندينج تو ذا نيدز اوف ذا نيدي So this is advocacy, which unfortunately may be the brother who came from a Khair Foundation. I know that he is taller, from, uh, far more taller than myself, and I'm far more shorter than himself. I remember him now, actually. And uh, uh, so advocacy should be a part of our mission. And there's something also to be added, brother Abdullah Rahal and the others, and sister Farzana, is humanitarian diplomacy humanitarian diplomacy peace building peace building building peace in the community this something has to be added as different layer that the community needs capacity building of the youngsters empowering the women and the young people in the community being more inclusive by getting others from different backgrounds because we are so confident in our message and in our value And we know that a lot of people would be sharing our values, our principles, and would love to stand up, uh, 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 up with us on our platform. These are the something which I wanted to talk to you about before Fajr, uh, between Fajr and sunrise here, and between Maghrib and Isha in Australia. I love you, and I will leave the floor for all of you to ask the question that you want. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakum Allah khairan, Doctor. Jazakum Allah khairan, Doctor Hani. We are mesmerized. We are really, truly mesmerized, and we just want this to go on, go on for you to keep on talking, and we we just want to listen to you, Doctor Hani. We just they don't want this to stop. Seriously, <laughs> seriously. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, and, and, I, and, and, and I'm just going to quote an example here. So you just said, you know, about the action. So I remember, you know, that uh, East Africa drought response, we were talking about putting funds and talking. You said, no, 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 no. this is not going to work like this. You're all talking about different things. You're going to go for small dams so we can actually, you know, disaster risk reduction. And this is not, we are just talking about in front of, like, you know, I think representation from all OIC, Organization of Islamic Cooperation sitting with all the in the un compound and said we all have to decide today this much this much this much fund then our efforts are going to be together and we are working like a force for a greater good this is what he said you know so so he's not just you know talking about it he actually believes in action and he does believe in action and in person he's different you know you are just standing by his side and it doesn't matter what all you are <laughs> you, you, you still listen to him and uh, alhamdulillah it's not just that okay many times i happen to be in a, a ir head office listening to him talking to others and including myself at uh, queen elizabeth conference hall by the house of commons brother dr hani so i'm while sitting and just thinking and recalling the memories i have with you listening to you and like the big crowd and in person as well so mashallah you know so uh, and uh, one more thing we are going to focus on uh, and we were talking among ourselves, Dr. Hani, uh, something similar to MCF. I know it's very premature, it's very young, the idea we have, but we do need to actually, you know, pull some string through you so we can actually, you know, join our forces here and, you know, set up and do something. And maybe IRW uh, and IR Australia being, again, the lead and being proactive and do something and take the lead and, you know, set up something similar to that, you know. So, you know, think about it and see how best we can actually do something. I'm sure you are not just based in the UK, you are an international, international citizen. <laughs> so, so you can actually do everything possible from there as well. You know what I forgot to mention, and I don't want to become sinful today, of remembering Brother Hussam, rahmatullah alayhi, may Allah bless his soul, was the chairman of Islamic Leaf who died, unfortunately, in electric shock, I think a year or two years ago. I'm making a dua. my apology of not starting my talk, remembering my remembering my dear brother Dr. Hassan. May Allah bless his soul, may Allah bless his family, his children, his wife. He was so young. 
But this was Allah's decision. I hope that you are looking after his wife and his children. Yes, I'm ready for the questions. Um, I would kindly request the um, brothers and sisters who have joined us remotely uh, from other um, uh, IR organizations. Could you please introduce yourselves as well? Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Hani. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept and reward you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept and reward you. Uh, your brother Muhammad Al Jibali, um, uh, Victoria coordinator, as they call us. Yani, you know, I'm the responsible person in uh, Victoria State, uh, the second uh, largest state uh, of our work in in Australia. Alhamdulillah, Jazakum Allah I can see Brother Kadir there. Uh, Brother Kadir, could you please introduce yourself? Kadir. Kadir, Kadir. Hmm. He said, yeah. Brother Kadir is one of our uh, active volunteers, but uh, he told me that he has um, a lot of noise in the background, in the place where he is, so uh, he prefers to stay in mute. So Sister Selina also is one of our volunteers in Victoria. If you could um, introduce yourself, Sister Selina. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Like Brother Muhammad said, I'm a volunteer at Islamic Relief in Victoria. Um, it's been an honor to be a volunteer. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Selina. Um, thank you so much for all your uh, contributions towards uh, uh, our cause. Um, I now open the floor for questions for uh, Dr. Hani. So please feel free to ask Dr. Hani um, any questions, anything that you want to discuss. Please, please feel free to raise it. 